much, but um, I guess the first ones we could probably talk about would be obviously the ones I've talked about the most about, which is probably Disney, maybe even Star Wars, but we'll do Disney first. Um, yes, I do love Disney. Uh, I love Disney, Disneyland, Disney movies, the whole jazz, the whole thing, um, which um, it's kind of hard to pick a couple of my favorite ones. I do have ones that I do really enjoy more than others. Uh, there are a couple of Disney movies that are kind of like kind of sleeper, kind of boring, but a lot of them are very good. Some of them are kind of too cheesy. Um, some of them are a little bit too, you know, too much Disney. I feel like that's a good way to sort of describe them. It's a little too Disney, too singy, songy, yada, 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 but some of them I feel like are really good. Um, let's see. I think definitely more into the, the Disney Pixar aspect of things. I really do enjoy the Disney movies, but I think Disney Pixar does have maybe like higher quality movies, at least as of right now. Um, obviously like the classic, you know, 90s sort of era of Disney movies when you go to like, you know, Hercules, Tarzan, Aladdin, yada, 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 yada Little Mermaid, Mulan, like that era. Amazing. Lion King, that's amazing. I feel like those are kind of speak for themselves in a way that you don't really even have to talk about them being like your favorite movies because I feel like we've all sort of grown up on them so you, they're kind of like no doubt ones but um, out of like that era I think definitely Hercules is probably like my favorite Disney movie of that era Mulan is maybe second I really love Mulan but I think Hercules is, is great I love the story uh, the music in that movie is amazing I love the villain it's probably my favorite villain 80s I love 80s um, and Hercules great one amazing, Peggy is amazing, yeah, I think Hercules is probably my favorite Disney movie of that sort of era, and then you've got like the more Disney Pixar-ish era, I mean, oh, that's tough, I mean, definitely for a long time it was Monsters, Inc., I remember way back in the day when we had to rent movies on the TV, but it's not like today where you can just like, you know, pick a movie to watch, and then you can rent it on your television, which I know some people do that still, I think that's even sort of like prehistoric to think about nowadays, um, then it was like obviously like a pay-per-view movie so you had to like wait for a specific time and then you had to like call you had to call in to your, like your cable for rider and you say hey i want to buy this movie at this you know specific time and then you would do that i mean specifically for me um ratatouille might be my favorite disney movie of all time if i really think about it um i feel like that movie is great um not because the story i think is very unique obviously you know 
original trilogy, and then I'm a big fan of the the pre the que the prequels, the prequel trilogy, whatever you want to call them, and then the sort of like newer trilogy that just came out. Those were good, definitely not as good as the other ones, but um, I'm a huge fan of episode number one. I still still stand to this day. Episode one might be one of my favorite ones. Um, episode six though is my favorite one of all time. I think it is the best Star Wars movie actually. <laughs> uh, that's obviously opinionated, and um, I really enjoyed episode seven. Episode seven I think is also kind of an underrated Star Wars movie. It might be my top three, top five out of the the nine that are in there. Um, I really enjoy that one's the the Force Awakening. I actually really enjoyed that one a lot. But episode one has a really soft spot in my heart. That's like the one I would watch probably like every weekend as a kid for, for the longest time me and my brothers would like like um like voice over the lines and stuff like that and then like when the jedis were fighting on on the screen we'd like fight imaginary like battle droids and stuff anyways super nerdy stuff but um yeah it's probably my favorite one so yeah star wars marvel disney the whole disney bundle whatever you want to call it um big fans of all that stuff so now we're gonna get out of that stuff and let's go into some more of a different category these in a certain way um maybe i'll do like feel good movies like my favorite feel good movies because again i uh, talked about that in another video and i talked about movies like blah blah mall cop and i talked about movies like step brothers and stuff like that but um one one really really good feel good movie that i totally forgot to put on that that video is the movie big the movie big with tom hanks i forgot I mean, I don't know if I'm going to rank these. Maybe I will at the end of the video if there's time or not, but that is one of my favorite movies of all time, like top five-ish around there, give or take. Um, I love that movie with a passion. And just like another video I did, I'm going to read the, I guess, the IMDb description of the movie. If you don't know the movie Big, it stars Tom Hanks, probably one of the best actors of all time. Um, it says here, after a wish turns 12-year-old Josh Baskin, who's played by David Moscow, interesting last name, uh, into a 30-year-old man, played by Tom Hanks. He heads to the city, I'm sorry, he heads to New York City and gets a low-end job at a toy company. But it says here, however, the pressure of living as an adult begins to overwhelm him and he longs to return to his simple former life as a boy. Um, yeah, uh, the acting in it is really great. I love the music in this movie as well. The vibe of the movie is really nice. It sort of gives you that nice little, like, comforting, like, 90s feel. Um, it's one of the, it's one of my favorite feel good movies, maybe one of my favorite movies of all time as well. And I'll see Tom Hanks is, is amazing. Uh, this is also maybe like a controversial pick as one of my favorite movies of all time. But I have to talk about it because again, as a kid, I watched this movie a lot, and it's also I think I think at one point in time it was the sort of like most expensive movie ever made, or at least it was on that listing as one of the most expensive movies ever made. Uh, as Robin Williams, and it's one of my favorite actors. It's the movie. sort of like another adaptation of Peter Pan and it's sort of like a weird turn on the story if when Peter Pan instead like grows up he grows as an, as, a, as an adult sort of has a normal human life has a normal job but then he you know his, his kids that he has 
It's basically how we are living life nowadays with always being, you know, on camera, live on screen, always trying to be in front of the camera, like what day-to-day -day life is, what's fake and what's real, and all these sort of things. And the ending to the movie is so dope as well. Like, uh, I love that movie, The Truman Show. Anything else? Comedies. Man, that's so hard to do because comedies are just so rich. There's so many of them. It's hard to even, like, pinpoint them. I could just think of, like, actors with comedy movies, like, I love everything Jim Carrey, Will Ferrell, um, Jack Black to a certain extent for sure. Um, I'm trying to think of like other ones. I mean, Anchorman. Anchorman could also be argued for one of the greatest comedy movies of all time, especially all the cameos that are made throughout that movie. Even in the second one, that's also a, a, well, it's not great. It's a good movie. It's a good comedy movie. Uh, but the first Anchorman movie, that is like also like that's like a good comedy movie. Like that, that's a solid one. It's Steve Carell is also just like a god in comedy like I love all those movies so yeah comedy movies it's kind of hard to pick like a bad one I kind of love all comedy movies because no matter what comedy movies are not meant to be extraordinary some of them are but most of them aren't but that's the sort of the point of them I guess and maybe to more like serious movies serious we can call them serious movies um I think I talked about this before in another video um Nightcrawler Nightcrawler Jake Gyllenhaal Jake Gyllenhaal maybe being my favorite actor, one of my favorite actors, for sure. Um, Nightcrawler is, if you haven't seen it before, and if I could even describe that movie in a way, I don't want to look it up on IMDb because it might have some sort of like weird description, but um, basically it's about a story. It's like a random movie about a guy who is always sort of like trying to find his next, you know, his next move, his next gig, is sort of what he's going to do next, and he uses a lot of like trickery with this word. He's kind of like a petty theft as well, and it gets into sort of like f uh, filming, and he sort of learns that you can actually make money from, you know, capturing things on camera, and apparently it makes pretty good money if you can be like the first person there, if you get a big scoop, yada yada yada, so he sort of runs around LA, it's set in Los Angeles, and him basically running around trying to find the next big, I guess, incident, and he stumbles upon a very big case, and uh, kind of spiraling him into, man, insanity, you could say, spiraling into, you know, being the best at what he can do, always striving to be better and better and better, making more and more money, being bigger and bigger and bigger. It's a really cool movie. It's a really, you can call it a thriller. It's a movie that is really interesting to sort of see how the character develops. And I think that's the best part about this movie is seeing Jake Gyllenhaal's character develop throughout the movie and how his mentality is. I think that's maybe the best part about this movie, seeing it and himself develop it. Um, yeah, it's a crazy movie. I love it a lot. The acting is obviously very amazing. A uh, movie that I sort of got written, gotten reminded of fairly recently, and I watched it fairly recently, is a movie called Buried by, well, it's not by, but it has Ryan Reynolds in it, and it's actually a movie where it's just Ryan Reynolds. Uh, he does that. There's like some like acting on the phone a lot from other actors, but it's mostly just a movie just about Ryan Reynolds, and it's a movie called Buried, because he's buried alive, and for some people that might be a very, like, anxiety-inducing, like, thrill rush type, type of moment, so maybe it's not a movie for everyone, because that's actually honestly a very scary thing to think about, being buried alive, like, yikes, um, but it's another very, like, mental, psychological type of movie, where it's like, wow, what would I do if I was in this situation, and I wonder what the character is thinking, and yada, 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 I think that's, again, one of the best parts about this movie, but also, the story in this movie is really cool, um, Ryan Reynolds does a great job, I actually wish Ryan Reynolds would do more acting like this, not being sort of always that sarcastic, funny guy, like we see him all the time in a lot of what's rom-com movies and Deadpool movies, I, I really liked him being, like, a serious actor in this movie, because he did a really good job in this movie, and in the ending of this movie is, is really cool. So, no, definitely recommend this one. Another really good one. Um, another sort of movie that's sort of, again, more of a serious movie. Um, 127 Hours. Uh, I remember first watching this movie. We rented it at, like, a, like a red box. If you guys know what that is, like a movie renting service that they used to have. I think, I don't know if they have them anymore. I like, I think they have them at, like, Walmarts and, like, grocery stores. Um, we watched it from one of those, and wow, what a movie. Um, it stars James Franco, and it's based off of a true story about a man who gets his arm trapped uh, while hiking by himself, and it's a very interesting movie that I guess I don't even really want to talk about a whole lot because, it, you know, I guess it is a true story movie, but it's a very interesting movie about a hiker who gets trapped, and it's a very crazy sort of mental 
also makes me never want to go hiking ever again because it is such a scary scenario about being trapped by yourself in the wilderness with, with nothing and I guess trying to figure out a way to, to get out of that situation which again is very scary to think about in real life but um, yeah I really highly recommend that movie I obviously highly recommend all these movies but 127 hours James Franco does an amazing job that's again maybe one of my favorite movies of all time I love the music the music is maybe one of my favorite things about this movie for sure for sure there's so many other ones that I can think about um, a movie I, I recently just watched um, Tick Tick Boom with Andrew Garfield which got I actually got nominated for an Oscar for actor leading actor in that movie that's a great movie it is a musical which I didn't know I was really into musicals a whole lot but then again I do like Disney so like I guess it's kind of the same thing but Tick Tick Boom Andrew Garfield did an amazing job I love that movie. That's literally like again one of my favorite movies. It's maybe my favorite Netflix.